Okay, so in this problem we have a classic torque balance or equilibrium problem called the sine, where you have some sine hanging on a uh, rod or maybe a beam that's attached by some rope to a wall that makes an angle with that wall that we'll call theta. Now the first thing for us to do is to recognize that this sine has a weight force down which we'll call mg, um, and it also has tension up in that rope which we'll call t. And those two forces are equal, t equals mg, and the reason why that's important it's because we know that that is the tension that's pulling down on the end of the rod. So we can say that that force is really just the weight of the sign. All right, now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and draw the rod as an extended body, right? Like it's a free body diagram. I'm going to draw the different forces that are acting. So there's that tension down, which we can just really call mg. Then there is this rope, which I've got it marked here, so you can see it's about three quarters of the way from the wall. So here, we'll call that force a tension T, which is different. We can call that, I don't know, T2 if we want. It's kind of irrelevant. Um, and we know that the angle that it makes, theta, is actually going to go here. So we'll put this becomes a T. Um, we can call that a Y if we want, or a perpendicular, since it's going to come for a torque. And that's a T parallel, or you could call it an x if you wanted, and theta is right there. Okay, then there's this uh, wall, this force from the wall. So basically this point um, has both a lifting force up, it could be friction um, or something else, and then a, a forward force that's causing it to not go through the wall, so that maybe is a normal force. Either way, there's some diagonal force coming up here, which we can call it F wall that's made up of some upward and some forward component to balance uh, T parallel and then the combined T perpendicular and the MG. But here's the thing, for us we actually don't want to worry about this because we're going to choose that to be our pivot or our point of rotation where we're going to measure all of the torques relative to, which means at that point there's going to be no torque. However, these two forces are going to have torques associated with them. Specifically, you're going to get a torque from the weight. Right here, you're going to have a tau, a torque. And then you're going to have a torque from this uh, perpendicular, sorry, perpendicular component right here. So let's, let's sum those torques. This torque would cause a counterclockwise rotation, and, or I'm sorry, a clockwise rotation, and then this torque, would cause a counterclockwise rotation. So since they're in opposite directions and for a, an equilibrium problem the torques are balanced, so they index to zero, we can just set them equal to each other. So the torque that comes from this, maybe I'll call that tau1 and this one tau2, so tau1 equals tau2. The torque that comes from the weight is just going to be mg times the length of the rod because that is the radial arm or the radial length so mg times L. For tau 2, that is applied at 3 quarters of the way from the length of the rod, so we're going to call that 3L over 4. And we're going to multiply just the perpendicular component, so uh, we'll call it T perpendicular 3L over 4. Let's talk about what T perpendicular is. Since it is adjacent to the angle, we're actually going to call this T cosine theta. So when we write this, we'll get T cosine theta, 3L over 4, equals MGL. Okay, now usually in these problems, what you want to do is you want to find the tension. So let's, let's solve this uh, problem for the tension in terms of the weight. The first thing that you do is get rid of L, because it's in both sides. Um, and then you're going to have T cosine theta, 3 quarters, equals MG. If I want to find the tension... I just need to divide both sides. So I'll flip this. I'll get 4mg over 3, and then the cosine goes in the bottom. Cosine theta. And that is the tension.